All right, this is the tabletop review of the SV Boney or SV Boney SV305 astronomy camera. Uh, this is a two megapixel color astrophotography camera uh, used for planetary imaging only, and they stress that when you start looking at the description. It's stressed because there is no cooling on this, so when this device gets hot, it, it gets pretty much in danger. Uh, so it, nothing over 30 minute exposures on that. It's got a built-in IR cut filter, filter with a uh, Sony IMX290 CMOS sensor. Uh, great sensor for astrophotography. Let me put the cap back on here. Set that to the side. You have extensions and C adapters that come in the box as well. So leave those off to the side. Uh, inside the box, in the bottom, uh, under this little flap, you will have your sharp cap. Uh, this, I do not have an optical drive on my computer, so uh, I'm able to just download download that product offline. It's it's free to download. It, it's great. It's a absolutely fantastic uh, for for general uh, video and photo taking through an astronomy camera. Uh, recognizes with Windows 10, it picks up the camera right away. There's no issues. I've also tested this on Windows 8 and Windows 7 with no issues. Uh, but you should, you really should be plug and play when you get into all this. Uh, next, you have a manual. Uh, this just kind of gives you what's in the box, uh, some specifications for your sensor. Um, gives you white balance specifications, your frame rates. Uh, believe on here, it'll tell you where, yeah, here's your buffer right here, 120 meg buffer, so uh, less frame loss than some of the other ones. Uh, you can kind of see how to set, faintly, you can see uh, how to set the C adapter to the cameras and so forth on here. It gives you a little more information. Um, you can pick up the drivers. If you're having issues doing installations, you can pick up the drivers from their website, svbonnie.com forward slash product forward slash user manual. And then uh, there's just other general information in here. It, uh, it is a good read if you're new to the, uh, the astrophotography field, um, planetary that is. Uh, and it comes with their warranty. And of course, SV Boney has just fantastic customer service. Also included, uh, looks like you got a little Lens white. Don't need the desiccant. Uh, USB. I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can have a look at that. You're going to carry a USB Type B. Uh, this is older printer cables use these, uh, which you, plugs right into the back. Um, I would not recommend using that uh, in super high humidity. You might have contact issues there. Uh, however, they do say you can run it in humidity relative to 20, 80, 20 to 80%. Uh, so the cable is included. Working temperatures on this camera, uh, they claim range from negative 4 to 122 degrees. Negative 4, I think, is a, is a pretty tolerant range if you're doing long exposures, 30 minutes. Uh, so you're going to get super low noise since it's so cold, and uh, you might even get a little extra out of there, maybe a little more than 30 minutes, and I don't know if they really care for me saying that or not, but uh, negative four is pretty cool for a non-cooled camera. Uh, as far as the higher heat, uh, you know, I wouldn't attempt to do any uh, planetary or astrophotography uh, in temperatures over 90 degrees anyways, just because I have my laptop out there. Your laptop's got batteries. I'm powering my equipment through a USB uh, portable generator. Uh, it's kind of like a giant power pack. It runs off 100 watts. Uh, but these cameras are super nice. What you'll see is that there's an SV-105 and SV-205, and then the latest is the SV-305. And this so far is the beefiest of them all. Higher, uh, higher capacity as far as the CMOS sensor goes. Uh, it is two megapixel, but when you start getting astrophotography, you care less about the pixel count and more about the sensor type that's going on here um, because you're just really focusing more on light transmission and you're not gonna do much cropping. So you don't really need a, a 10 or a 12 megapixel device 
because you're not going to crop it down. Uh, and plus, the human eye really can't tell apart uh, anything over 15 megapixels. So anything over 15 megapixels is a waste for photography in general, unless you're doing some serious cropping down. Uh, on this device, you got some nice little torque screws. Uh, this is not user serviceable, so I'm not taking this apart. But I'd imagine inside here is uh, probably a gasket or an O-ring of some type to keep moisture out of the device. Uh, built in, I don't know if I said this already, but you got an IR cut filter. Uh, and maybe if your warranty expires, you might want to look in taking your IR cut filter off and uh, using a, a adapter or a lens of some sort to, uh, to do your own filtering for IR. A little bit about the specs here. The pixel size is 2.9 micrometers uh, by 2.9 micrometers with a 12-bit ADC. Uh, USB 2.0, which again, it's going to use that Type B. Uh, this is aluminum alloy, and uh, it's supported through Windows. Uh, I, I do not have a Mac computer to verify that. However, I do have a, a Linux machine, and I am able to run SharpCap through Wine. Uh, so there's a little bit more online if you want to look at processing through Wine uh, in a Linux environment. However, you can run the Sharp Cap since it's just a flat file. You can move it from the disk onto a drive and then have that and be able to open it up in, in the Wine system. Uh, this is a back illuminated type sensor. Uh, so what's different between this and, and some of the other sensors that you're going to see used in astrophotography is that the photodiode is going to be directly behind the color filter, whereas most of them have some sort of uh, substrate or subtrain in there. Uh, you'll see maybe some metal wiring under there. Again, this seems minuscule, but it really cuts down on the noise that you're going to see when you start using these items. Uh, to stress again, SP Bonnie is, is adamant on saying, do not use this for deep space photography. Now, I would say at some point, uh, they will be able to attach maybe some sort of fan or maybe you'll be able to buy an attachment or something to make this for DSO. Uh, but right now it's just for, you know, stacking, stacking your planetary images. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, uh, probably get some Venus on there. Uh, of course, moon, anybody can do the moon. That's a great place to start if you're new to astrophotography because you'll, uh, you really get the basics down when you start looking at the moon. I have uh, actually tested this out on my uh, Celestron CPC 1100, and it did a fantastic job with the HD wedge. Uh, I was able to perform perfect tracking uh, through auto guide on the telescope, and I was I did shoot a 24 minute video, but uh, I've had some issues processing that on my computer, and I had a, a corrupt drive, so I'm currently trying to recover the information off of that. Uh, <clears throat> Since it's winter for most people uh, this time of year, that's uh, uh, using the Amazon.com website, that is, uh, we're going to see slightly lower temperatures. So at lower temperatures, these are going to operate uh, much better than you would see at the 60 plus temperatures, especially if you're getting around the 20 to uh, 10 degree range. Uh, you're going to see just a lot better quality um, out of your images. You're going to see a lot of reduced noise which is definitely going to help with your planetary imaging. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about this device, which they come with a fantastic warrant, DSB Bunny just really goes over the top of their customer service. Uh, you just directly email them. Uh, they are in China, so you're going to have a little bit of a time delay, but they get back to you relatively quickly, and they make sure that you are taken care of. Um, and that's really, really all there is to say about that. Uh, enjoy this little device. And it's right now, I believe they have a $20 off uh, coupon code that you can clip on Amazon. Uh, otherwise, this just retails for about $140, $143, somewhere along that line. Uh, which, for what it is, being a non-cooled, is a perfectly great price. Most of the time, you'll see a cooled uh, camera with this same sensor in it, really around uh, the $250 mark.